Islam and greetings. I hope you all have been good to one another. And I hope you've been loving and protecting each other. Islam. I am Prince Anil Bey, Divine Prince and Supreme Grand Sheik of the Divine Theocracy of the Moorish Science Temple of America through Temple Alhambra. Greetings all, and once again, I hope uh, you have, of course, been living the best life that you have. Uh, this will be one of those rest of the session sessions. And today I will make more clarifications on my last video. And the rest of that session is as follows. The brother I was, was, I was speaking to in the last video, you see, I understand his motives. I even understand his methodology. I even understand why he executed in such a manner. But if the brother was a true Moorish scientist, then he had to have seen this coming. Because one of the frailties of falsehood and misguidance is one day it will catch up to you. You see, the Moor was banking on him being the only person, especially here in Chicago, who was around during those days. And he banked on it because what he knew was by him being the oldest person that anybody knew, he could get out with it. He could fool people into believing every word he says. He could do that because what he thought was he was the only person in Chicago who was left from that era. But you see, once again, this is the age of Aquarius. And if the brother was a true Moorish scientist, he understands that we tell time by the ages, not the hands on the clock. And he was counting on living out the rest of his life through the hands on a clock with that lie on his lips. What the brother didn't know was that I have access to a 112 year old Moor. I have access to her. I met her when I was 12 years old. When my masters, when my masters were in the Prophets Young Men's International Business League, she used to bring them meals while they studied and designed their business models and plans. She used to bring them their meals. She is 112 years old. She was born in the 1800s and this brother was not. You see, the age of Aquarius means, brother, all that was hidden will now come to
to light. Your lie has expired. Your lie has expired. It is the age of Aquarius. The facts that you hid, they came to light. And more will come. Count on it. Count on it. You see, these young Moors who don't think, they look at you. They see how old you are. And so what comes out of your mouth must be the truth. Because they are young and impudent and unknowledgeable. They see you, look at your age, and automatically accept you as the elder. And that is because they never had any formal training in Moorish science. Therefore, they don't know the difference between an elder and someone who's just older. They don't know the difference. They think they are one and the same. And they are not. And perhaps you didn't know that. You're not an elder. By no stretch of the imagination are you an elder. You may be the eldest one in a room, but you are by no means a Moorish elder. You see, because what Miss Carey has given me, oh, by the way, more, uh, you take a nice photograph as a baby. You take a nice photograph as a baby. Your aunt and uncle, they look like real decent people. Real decent people. And you bring shame upon them. You bring shame upon them. During the time that, you know, you... I'll use your words, were in the temple. Do you know why I asked you if you remembered Sister Connell? The reason I, I pointedly asked that, because you see, if you were in the temple as you lead these Moors to believe, then you would have remembered her and her husband. That's why I asked you if you remember, because I know as a baby you couldn't remember anything. But that's why I pointedly asked if you remember Sister Connell. Because if you were in the temple as you say, and as you lead these Moors to believe, then you would remember her. And you would also remember Sister Carrie. Mm -hmm. You would remember her too. So you were banking on being the oldest more from the prophet's temple. You should have thought it out further more. You should have thought it out further. Now, let's talk about your rank of Supreme Grand Sheep and leader of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Oh, Miss Carey told me some very interesting things. She shared lots of original Mo uh, Moorish science temple during the prophet's time. See, you thought you were the only one. She is 112 years old. Mm -hmm. She went to the funerals of both my masters. She outlived them. And they were young men. They were like 19 and 20. She outlived them. She was grown. When they entered the temple, she outlived them. She is 112 years old. You weren't born in the 1800s. 
Just get yourself correct, boy. Stop lying to these people. Just stop it. Just please stop it. Because you bring no honor to the brotherhood. You are dishonoring everything with your lies. You are dishonoring everything. But of course, when you never gave a shit about anything, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The only thing you cared about was being viewed as, being seen as, being known as, only because as a baby, you went into the temple. And you convinced these more that you were, I don't know, a young man, perhaps. Because you never went beyond that. I was raised in the temple. You never went beyond that. And the stuff we used to talk about, I would listen to you. And some of the nonsense you would tell me, oh, I'd have to go and visit Miss Carrie. I would have to. Because your outlandish claims were just too incredulous. But Miss Carrie set me straight. Miss Carrie set me straight. And if she were to see you, she would set you straight too. You young whippersnapper. She set you straight too. You thought you were the only one and that's why you thought you could get out with this. The prophet told you, new moors will be coming in knowing and seeing. See, you don't even believe the prophet. Well, as one of the prophet's adopted sons, I am here to fulfill the prophecies. Not keep the Morris Science Temple steeped in the turn of the last century. Like so, like you and so many other Moors do. Because they don't understand progress or progression. Speaking of which. You tout yourself as the Supreme Grand Sheik. I will tell you, brother. It would be a wonderful thing if you would demonstrate to the nation that you are the head of your accomplishments while in that office. Demonstrate to the nation the things that you have brought back from the Romans for them. Demonstrate to the Moors the fights and struggles you have had in furtherance of the prophet's agenda. You demonstrate these things and you line them up. Now, my question is, because I already know the answer, my question is, who raised you to the rank of Sheik? What was the Hierophant's name who raised you? What year did you go through chambers? You see, I already have the answers to these. I just need for you to tell the boys who view this rest of the session and bring these questions to you. You see. And bring these questions to you. I wonder what answers you will give them. Because I will give them the rest of the story. What have you done as Supreme Grand Sheik? How many times have you faced the Romans on behalf of your people? How many times have you been persecuted by Rome and your own people? for the work you were performing? What accomplishments have you made as Supreme Grand Sheik during your tenure in that rank? How many people have you saved from the jaws and the clutches of the Romans? 
What is your record as Supreme Grand Sheik of the Moorish Science Temple of America? You see, when the Moors bring these questions to you, you know what that means now? Old Moor, who should be in the back where you rightfully belong? What that's going to mean is you'd better have some damn good answers to some damn hard questions. That is what that means for you. Because for years now, you have been telling people this. And now, when the people demand an answer, isn't it your duty to give it to them? Answer the Moors. When they bring these questions to you, you answer them. You answer them because they are legitimate and valid questions. And anybody in your nation, they have every right to ask you. If you are running a Republican form of government, they got every right to ask you. I'm just wondering what you're going to come up with in the way of answers. Yes, who made you? Who made you? And what year did you cross? You see, these little minor questions, they're not minor to you now, are they? Uh, at any rate, more, this isn't a taunting video. This is simply the rest of the last session. And there, you know, of course, will be questions that people have. You tout yourself as the Supreme Grand Sheik of the Morris Science Temple of America. What is your record? And where is it in law that you hold such a title? Where is it? Where is it? The prophet told you we were coming. He told you we were coming. Years ago when I first came back and held that meeting, the Grand Sheiks, governors, I am Anael, Archangel. And the one thing I know, while I don't know much, the one thing that I know is when the boss, when Pops, sets things aright. There is one running theme every time he does this. When he sets things aright, he sends angels to tear shit up. That's what he does. I told you why I came. None of you listened. And what is coming next will be of your own making because you do not listen. Yes, in order to set things aright, what exists must be destroyed. Now, this is Pop's standard practice. You can name any place and anything in history. See, when he makes things brand new, he destroys what's there. The Moorish Science Temple of America is brand new. Now, what do you think that means for you and your fakery? What do you think it means for you? Brother, because I know you don't remember, when your aunt and uncle were taking you to the prophet's temple. Oh, before I go into this, you brothers and sisters who uh, check with this brother from time to time, or often, however you do, uh, ask the brother where the temple was that he was going to. Ask him where the temple was located, what street it was on. When you... When you brother see this more, ask him what temple he went to. Ask him exactly what street he was on. 
and I'll tell you the truth. Uh, back when uh, the Moor is claiming to, you know, be all that, uh, Chicago was still being put together because as I uh, told you uh, during the last video, the uh, Columbia Exposition. Now, the Columbia Exposition, I'm going to give you the science behind it. The Columbia Exposition was to mark the complete and utter subjugation of the city of Egypt. It's called Chicago now. That exposition that they had, also known as a World's Fair, it was here. It was the crowning glory for the church's defeat of the Moroccan Empire. That is why the Columbia Exposition was held here. This is Egypt. And the conquering of Egypt and Imperial Morocco was high on the church's list of things to do. And they were still building Chicago. Um, Columbia Drive, you know, which is now King Drive. Columbia Drive took you from, it would take you all the way from Grant Park, but it, there was no Grant Park there. There was a road before they built a park. There, there was a road there. Uh, and it would, it, it came straight through, straight down Columbia uh, Drive or Columbia Parkway. Pardon me. Columbia Parkway. And then it became Columbia Drive when you got past, uh, what was it, 43rd or 47th Street. Then it turned into Columbia Drive. It went straight through to Washington Park. Now, Washington Park is just west of Cottage Grove, and Cottage Grove is pretty much the end of Hyde Park. Hyde Park was built to accommodate the visitors who would come to the World's Fair here in Chicago. That is why many of the apartments over in Hyde Park, they're so tiny. They were simply short-term rental rooms for the people who came to the World's Fair. The only, check that, there are two, two remnants of the 1893 World's Fair still here. One is that gigantic golden statue sitting in Jackson Park because that was the Midway. Check that. The Midway was the Midway. Midway Plaisance, which runs right in front of the University of Chicago. Midway Plaisance, where the Bears used to practice football. And where they practiced was where they got the name Monsters of the Midway, because that's where they used to practice in the 30s. George Hallis would have them out there. At any rate, the two remnants of the 1893 World's Fair held here in Egypt to celebrate the conquering of Egypt was held in 1893. And the other remnant is the Museum of Science and Industry, which the city has completely fucked over. I mean completely fucked it up. But uh, those are the only two. Check that. There are three remnants. The third remnant is Daly's Restaurant. They moved across the street from their original location into a brand new building that was uh, constructed. I think they just finished it maybe last year, year before last. But those are the three remnants of the 1893 World's Fair held right here. You come down Columbia, you come down Columbia Drive, you hit Washington Park, you make a right turn, I mean, check that, make a left turn, and you are at the World's Fair. Hyde Park was built to accommodate the visitors to the World's Fair. That is why Hyde Park was built. 
Hyde Park is also built on landfill. Most of the entire south side is landfill. Yes, they were still working on this town when this brother was claiming to be with the prophet. And Moors, that is the rest of that session. I bid you peace.